Hello YouTube, Butcher here, and I'm bringing you a Civilization V Gods and Kings LP. That's right, I'm doing an LP. This is something I've actually never done before, and it's something I've always wanted to do, and... I know a lot of you are going to be complaining and whining because you're expecting Men of War videos or Napoleon vids and, and I haven't really been playing those two games very much this summer. This is actually what I've been playing um, in single player mainly. So I thought I'd just give it a shot and um, bring you an LP. So I've decided to play as Sweden. That's partly because I know I have a lot of Swedish fans and, and Sweden as a faction in this game is pretty awesome. I'm going to go with Pangaea map mode. Um, Emperor is fine. Victory... T I, I usually turn off science victory because it's I feel like it's kind of a cop out like you just you win the game pretty fast when you're playing a science and it's not very challenging but I'm gonna keep it on just for the sake of you know showing people what it's like to win a, a science victory in case you, you've never played this game it's a pretty interesting game and I I do anticipate that a lot of you are gonna you know f be interested in buying it as I play um, this LP hopefully that is the case I'll turn off quick movement um, Large is too big for fraps. I'll go standard. That's fine. And that should be that should be good. Let's start. All hail the transcendent King Gustavus Adolphus, founder of the Swedish Empire and her most distinguished military tactician. It was during your reign that Sweden emerged as one of the greatest powers in Europe, due in no small part to your wisdom, both on and off the battlefield. As king, you initiated a number of domestic reforms that ensured the economic stability and prosperity of your people. As the general who came to be known as the Lion of the North, your visionary designs in warfare gained the admiration of military commanders the world over. Thanks to your triumphs in the Thirty Years' War, you were assured a legacy as one of history's greatest generals. O oh, noble king, the people long for your prudent leadership, hopeful that once again they will see your kingdom rise to glory. Will you devise daring new strategies, leading your armies to victory on the theatre of war? Will you build a civilization that stands the test of time? I'm sure he will. <laughs> Man, that guy's an epic voice. Anyway, um, so here I am starting with a settler and a warrior. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to go too vanilla with this. I know most people are watching this have some sort of idea of how to play the game but I'm gonna give little tips and tricks when I can and make this as informative as possible because that's what I like to do anyway the first thing I do recommend that people do if you're starting out the game is to go toggle map options and turn your resource icons on this is very useful as you can see as I when I take it off um, nothing shows up when I put it on it's very clear that I have spices, sugar, spices, bananas. That's pretty awesome. Because once I found a shrine, I'm, I, I intend to play pretty culturally, and there's, um, there's a cultural belief, not a cultural, a religious belief, um, that gives you plus one culture per plantation, and that's pretty awesome. So, I'm going to found Stockholm here. And this is a pretty awesome um, spot, mainly because I have one, two, three, four hills around me. Um, all grasslands pretty much, bananas which give you plus one food with a granary, plantations which will make me nice and rich with lots of culture if, if I choose um, the right shrine, and um, a river obviously. Rivers are awesome because they're a fresh water source, they give you tons of food, um, special buildings like the water mill, um, later on I think it's called the hydro plant that gives you plus one production per river tile. Rivers are awesome, this is, this is an excellent spot, I couldn't wish for something better. So I'm just going to move my warrior around and choose production. I always like to start with monument first. It's, it's usually a very good idea because um, it gets your culture up and running. And then I'm going to go with pottery because I want to get my shrine up as soon as possible because I'm playing pretty culturally and religion's going to be a big part of my game. Almost discovered. Next turn. Ruins explored. You find survivors lost in the ruins. In gratitude, they settle in one of your cities, increasing its population. That's pretty awesome. I think the best ruin to get early in the game is the one that gives you plus 20 culture. That gives you a head start on everyone. 
And that's pretty cool. Another thing you might want to do is turn citizen management on when, um, when you're managing your cities. I do sometimes let the, um, the computer or the AI to take charge of this, uh, of, the food, uh, of the tile distribution and stuff, and like, you know, go food production goal. But in general, I like to be um, in control, and, and I choose the tiles myself. This is fine. Your top priority should always be to grow your city. After you grow your city, um, you should try and get your science buildings up as soon as possible. Because if you fall back in science, you're always at a disadvantage. Okay. See, looks like there's a city-state here. Kathmandu, cultural. Gems, it's pretty cool. Definitely gonna be my top priority in this game. Cool thing about Sweden is that you don't have to play peacefully or aggressively, they're so flexible. Um, the fact that um, you can gift city states um, uh, your great people is, is pretty awesome. That's, that's excellent. Here's, here's the 20 culture I was talking about. If you get this um, ruin, you're pretty lucky. So I've got 28 out of 25 culture. That, that sort of gives me the right to open up my first social policy branch. And I'm going to go with liberty. And liberty is best for civilizations which, which desire to rapid expansion. And that's exactly what I want to go with. So by opening up the first one, I get plus one culture in every city. And that's pretty cool. So now Stockholm is doing making two culture per turn. And you see those, I, I know there are a lot of people who used to mix, who've, a lot of my friends have mixed this, um, this thing up. When you see, in, in, the city, in the city screen, when you see this purple hex thing, it means that in however, you know, it says four turns until border growth. In four turns time, either this tile or this tile is going to be unlocked. It doesn't mean that these are unlocked at the moment or there's anything special going on in them. It just means what tiles are probably going to be unlocked um, as soon as you have enough culture to expand your, your borders. So that's cool. One of these um, plantation um, tiles is going to open up. And that should be nice. Alright, so finished pottery. Next, I'm probably going to want to go with... Masonry. Not masonry, what am I talking about? Bronze working. So, mining and then bronze working. Mining because it's a prerequisite to bronze working. And bronze working so that I can chop down these um, these jungles right here. And I'm eventually going to need um, masonry too because this um, sugar plantation is on a marsh, and you need um, you need masonry to clear a marsh, as you can see here. So, when choosing your technologies, you should always sort of plan around what you have in the beginning. Oh, that's awesome! I have marble here. Marble's great for building wonders. So. If you have a ton of, you know, uh, plantations, you want to try and get Calendar as soon as possible, because Calendar, where is it, gives you the ability to construct plantations. But there's no point of going Calendar if, if, if your luxury resources are on, you know, a marsh or inside a jungle, because you're going to need to clear that jungle or clear that marsh before you can actually build the luxury resource. So it's all about planning, you know, beforehand, and, um, trying to unlock your luxury resources and, and you need the technology to sort of uh, clear this stuff that they're in and they're usually around you know marshes or jungles or forests and, and you need mining to clear forests jungles are clear with bronze working marshes with um, masonry so I finished my monument I'm now making four culture per turn it says my next policy will be in six turns and I've decided to build a shrine because I want to try and rush a religion Oh, look, someone's already beaten me. An unknown civilization has started worshipping a pantheon of the gods. They have chosen the belief, God of the Sea, plus one production from fishing boats. And I'm gonna bet, oh! Fetawi yuhon ko zibay chin hoi. In kwanda na matta. In ee hai la silla se, ras tafari makonnen, ye tiyo piyano gusin nante tammany agal gai nin. We've got Ethiopia here. Ethiopia is one of those factions that usually gets the first religion. I wouldn't be surprised if... Yep, it's an Ethiopian pantheon. The Ethiopians get a special building, I think it's called the uh, obelisk or something, and it gives them... It basically replaces the monument, gives them plus one culture, or plus two culture, and faith. 
So they usually get the first pantheon. They get their pick of um, pantheons first. And I'm not going to go into you know the, the details of what a pantheon does because um, you know I'm expecting whoever's watching this to at least have some sort of idea of what's going on. Um, so Addis Ababa, Ethiopia is my neighbor. That's not too good because they tend to spread their religion like crazy. And that's what I want to do. So I'm probably going to have to invade him fairly soon. And the thing about Haile Selassie is that if you have more cities than him... Yeah, embassies are cool. Um, the meat shall The thing about um, Ethiopia is that if... If you have more cities in them, their co their units get a combat bonus, and that means if I'm gonna attack him, that means I can't have too many cities nearly going. All right, so I've unlocked another social policy, and I usually go with republic and then collective rule to get an early settler, but I'm gonna open up citizenship and get a free worker first because there's tons of um, things I need to do around my capital. I still can't chop down any forests or clear the marsh. So I'm just gonna build a farm here. No, it's not a river, let's build the one on the river first. Okay, and I'm gonna continue exploring my warrior. Barbarian camp and the woods. Okay. Tons of barbarians. Awesome. The unit equips itself with advanced weapons found in the ruins. So now this warrior has been upgraded to a spearman. Let's move our workers here. Remember, workers. So I move my worker here, and I'm gonna build a farm on the river. Farms and rivers are nice because once you unlock, once you research um, civil service, food from the terrace farm increased by one. Where is it? Food from farms increased by one on tiles with access to fresh water, and rivers are considered as fresh water, so. Even though it says, if you look at the, um, the tile, it says plus two food here. Once I build the farm, it's going to give me plus one food. And then once I research civil service, that gives me plus four food on this tile. That's, that's pretty awesome for growing Stockholm. And as I said, growing your cities should always be your priority. Because cities that grow give you more science and they give you more gold. And, you know, they just unlock more tiles for you to work. And that means you can have, you know, higher production, higher science, etc. It's just growing cities is always a good idea. And that should always be your top priority. Okay, let's see what I get. That's awesome. I'm getting very lucky with these um, ruins. You found an ancient ruin, and this time it's given me 20 faith. That's pretty cool. Because now I can, next turn I'm going to be able to find a pantheon. And I'm definitely going to go with oral tradition. Alright. So finish the shrine. Let's go with... So what do I build now? This is usually what new players um, find very difficult to, f to know to know what to build next. I'm gonna go with scout because it's it's something I should do. Unlocking you know the map and seeing what's what's around you is very important so that you can plan ahead. And because if you find um, city states first, they give you a 30 gold um, gift. But if you find them after someone else has found them, city states only give you 15. So that's it's also a good incentive to explore. So you have you have enough faith to found a pantheon. Over here is your faith, and as soon as you reach a certain amount of faith, you can unlock a pantheon, which gives you a nice little um, little boost to your um, civilization. And it's, uh, the the pantheon is usually something you want to choose according to your surroundings and how you want to play, obviously. I want to play culturally, so I'm going to choose something that's going to me, give me tons of culture. And because I have tons of um, potential plantations, I'm going to go with Oral Tradition, which gives you plus one culture from plantations. There's obviously much stronger um, pantheon beliefs. For example, where is it, where is it, where is it? Fertility rights, plus 10% faster growth in cities. That's, that's, that's freaking awesome. That's not something I'm too worried about because um, there's plenty of ways to grow your city, and I want to get um, an early culture boost. So I'm going to go with actually plus one culture from jungle tiles. I have tons of jungles here, but usually 
That's not very useful. I'm going to go, I'm going to stick with normal tradition, plus one culture for plantations, because I'm definitely going to build a plantation on this spice farm, on this sugar farm, on this spice farm, and this banana farm. So all these plantations are going to give me one, two, three, four, four culture, just from Stockholm. I am sold. Yes. My culture is still plus four per turn, that's because I'm not working any plantations yet. I mean, the tiles are worked, but they're not plantations yet. I have to build a plantation on it so that I can actually um, uh, reap the benefits of plus one culture. Okay, so that's not too bad. Once I build a scout, I'm gonna have to build up my military because on on Emperor difficulty, awesome. This this is this game is turning out awesome. This is one of my favorite natural wonders. Carol Potosi is is an awesome natural wonder because it gives you plus ten gold. This is an awesome natural wonder. I'm definitely gonna have to expand in this direction. Okay. Katmandu requests your assistance against invading barbarians. Each barbarian you kill will earn you influence over the city state. Katmandu. So once I build up my military, I'm definitely gonna send the contingent over here to help them with their barbarian problem because I wanna ally these guys as soon as possible because they are a um, cultural city state and I definitely want their cultural boost. Okay. Let's keep exploring. And I have to wait for another turn before I can chop down this jungle. See what it says here. Bronze working technology is required to clear the jungle from this tile. So I'm just going to... this turn. Nice. Oh. Oh, monopion thavma. Pion onoma epimise, o kalos xenos. Imi Theodora, i fili du vizandio. What a slut. Ah. So much for rushing your religion. That's another religious um, civilization. Byzantine the, the Theodora's, I think, her special ability is basically an extra belief to her religion, and that makes her very powerful. She's definitely the AI is programmed as the Byzantinians to um, rush religion and um, sort of, you know, focus on religion. That's something I wanted to do. It's not. It's not something you should be doing in Sweden. But I like to, you know, play culturally and um, expand really fast. And religion has lots of beliefs and help you do that. So I finished bronze working, and my workers are on their way to chopping down this forest. The next thing I want to research is definitely calendar, so that I can build plantations. And once I have my plantations up, um, I'll have a spice plantation here, sugar plantation here, and she can be tons of gold, happiness from the luxuries, and culture, and that should be awesome. Exploring. I want to get these guys. Okay, another barbarian camp. Next turn. Ikusa se prepoda tesalotrias omilias. Me dixas. Embassies basically are useful for finding out where another civilization is. She, she's sending me an offer. I, I can't send her. See, this thing is. Where is it? I, I can't ask her to give me. Um, her embassy because um, I haven't researched writing yet. Once you research writing, you can um, exchange embassies. She has researched um, writing, and so she sent me an offer. If I give her an, an embassy in my capital city, she'll give me 25 gold. What the embassy does is it basically um, uncovers your starting city location to the other civilization. So right now I accept it, so um, Theodora can see Stockholm. It'll, be, it'll still be in a fog of war, but she can see, she can see the city and every two t and like two tiles in every direction around it. So she can basically see now that I have a farm here. It's not a farm. A farm here. Um, spices, sugar, bananas. She can see everything, but it's not. Ba it's basically grayed out. So it's pretty useful if you want to know where um, where someone is, how far they are from you, um, stuff like that. And I only accept it because she offered 25 gold, and I don't really care if she finds out where I am. Public declaration from Ethiopia. Ethiopia announces to the world that it is now it is now protecting Kathmandu. Ooh, that's something I want. Attacking the city-state or denouncing or demanding tribute from it will greatly damage relations and may lead to war. Well, you know what? I'm gonna protect Kathmandu as well. Now, when you when you um, pledge to protect a civilization, what it does is it basically increases your influence with them every turn. 
until it rests at 10. So it says each turn, your influence with them will change by 1 until it ends. That's exactly what I just said. So, that's cool, because if I, in 10 turns time, my influence will, with them will be 10. Once it's 30, I become friends with them. Once it's 60, I'm their ally, and they give me their nearby um, gems and, and cultural boost. Okay, so my scout is finished. I'm going to start work on a spearman, because if my military stays too weak, it will be easy pickings. Lots of barbarians right here. Oh, great. Mr. Ruin gives me 70 gold. I have 315 gold. That's pretty cool. I keep exploring these guys. And Stockholm is going. I have four population in Stockholm. Let's see. Three food here. It's, it's a pretty decent um, setup. I'm going to continue growing. West pretty fast because um, these guys are gonna block me off pretty soon. I'm not in a very nice position. I'm pretty sure there's a dead end here. Yep. Not much room to expand here. I have to go west pretty soon. There's tons of jungle here. It's not gonna make it too easy. It slows down your expansion. There's tons of jungle. That's not too bad. Okay, four turns until I can build a plantation because I need calendar. But at least I've chopped down the forest here. Let's go over here and chop down this one and uh, save some time. One more turn until I unlock my next policy. Okay, doke. And now I'm going to go with Republic. Plus one production in every city and plus five percent production in cities with constructed buildings. This is nice, but the reason why I'm unlocking it is because I want to get this collective rule speed speeds the training of settlers by 50% in the capital city and a free settler appears near this near the capital and that's that's exactly what I want. I want to expand faster than my neighbors now one thing i know a lot of new players have never heard of is demographics this is a very very useful menu that you want to check on pretty often in both single player and multiplayer you go to unlock it, you go to additional information at the top right corner, and then you click on demographics. This is basically a list of how your civilization is doing in, in comparison to everyone else, and then it tells you who's the best in that category and who's the worst, and then the average, obviously. So in terms of population, I'm second, that's, that's pretty good, that means I'm growing fast, I'm growing faster than everyone else, not everyone else, someone's growing better than me, they're having higher population than me. Crop yield basically translates to um, how much food per turn you are make, you're, you're making in your in your entire empire. That's 11, the best is 14, so I'm not too far behind. The worst is um, Theodora, the Byzantinians, they're not, they're not doing too well. Yes. Manufactured goods translates to production, how many hammers per turn, GNP is gold, land is the total number of tiles you have, I'm third, so Obviously, it's too early to make any difference or you know mean anything really. Soldiers. This is probably the most important one when you're playing on higher difficulty levels in um, single player. Because I'm playing on standard map mode, uh, there are eight. Um, there's seven other people other than me. I'm I'm one player, and then there's seven AIs. You don't want to be the worst in military because once the AI sees that you have the weakest military, I'm seventh at the moment. The best has 23,000 soldiers. I have 15,000 soldiers. When you're the weakest, you're always the target, and people always try and rush you. That's why when you're playing in single player, particularly on the um, higher difficulty levels, like I'm playing Emperor right now, you want to make sure that you don't neglect your military, and that's why I'm building a Spearman now. And then after I build a Spearman, I'm probably going to build an Archer, so that um, you make the AI think twice before attacking you. Approval is the overall happiness in your empire, and literacy is, um, is your technology, the number of techs you have roughly. Um, my literacy value is zero, even though I have researched some technologies, and that's because it, it remains zero until you research writing. So that's demographics in a nutshell. Very important. You should check on demographics every now and then. 
Не дамамно, а у него такие мы забачим такамино. You want to be very careful about who you make friends with um, in single player. Now, as Sweden, my special ability is the Nobel Prize, which means that I get a plus 10% um, boost to um, great person generation if if I have friends with someone. But I'm going to say no because I do intend to attack him. I I know this guy's going to rush religion and he's going to he's going to be very annoying and I don't want him to take over in terms of religion. Mind um, befriending Theodora, though. Kathmandu desires porcelain. <laughs> the merchants of Kathmandu seek new riches. They have heard rumors of porcelain and its great value. You will be rewarded if you are able to connect this resource to your trade network. Porcelain is um, a new luxury resource that you know, is only available in Gods and Kings. It wasn't in vanilla. And to to get that, you basically need to um, befriend or ally a uh, mercantile city-state, and there hasn't been one yet. Wittenberg. This is a religious city-state. They provide faith if you ally them. Unfortunately, their luxury resource is gems. It's the same as Kathmandu, so it's not going to be too useful. But I'll, I definitely want to want to ally these guys because um, they're going to give me a faith bonus, and that'll allow me to um, found a religion pretty fast. Ethiopian Byzan Byzantium are now friends. So teach us to number our days, so that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. Okay, so I have calendar now, and that's going to give me uh, build plantations, which are going to give me a nice gold bonus and um, culture. Okay, next technology. Um, archery, for sure, because archers are great defensive units, and I want to have um, tons of those. turns. 23 turns till I get my next policy. That's not great. That's the price you pay for opening up an early worker, but I'd like to improve my city first before opening up uh, my cellar. So, it's, it's, I guess the, it's the price you pay. It's not too bad. Turn 35. I think I'll end this um, first segment on turn 50. I'm playing pretty fast. I'm not going, you know, it's not... It's not too easy. Like I'm not, I'm not basically explaining it for total newbies. It's just um, perfect. Kathmandu targets the nearby encampment. If I can take this out, I'm probably gonna be allied with them pretty soon. So yeah, I'll keep exploring. Citizens of Kathmandu have become uneasy at the presence of a nearby barbarian encampment, and they'd like someone to destroy it. They will amply reward whoever accomplishes this, and I will accomplish this. Okay. Wittenberg requires your assistance against invading barbarians. Yeah, I should be able to do that. Spearmen are strong. I'll just heal up in this tile over here and then uh, attack. Okay, so I've cleared this jungle over here. Wittenberg calls for faith. The people of Wittenberg look look to worldly affairs for religious guidance. Whoever can garner the most faith in a period of 30 turns will gain influence with him. 30 turns remaining. This is a cool new feature in um, in, in the expansion. Basically, um, city-states will give you a quest every now and then. And the quest doesn't go only for you, it's for everyone who, everyone else who's basically um, discovered the city-state. So everyone who knows where Wittenberg is gets this quest. and. Basically, I have 30 turns to make the most faith. The, the civilization with the most faith, after 30 turns, is going to get a huge um, influence boost with them. And that's, in the early going, it's usually enough to, um, to make them your ally. So, the city-state mechanics have basically changed a lot since vanilla. It's no long, allying city-states is no longer mainly about you know, having the most gold and just showering them Would you gold. be interested in a trade agreement with England? Sure. So as I was saying, uh, allying city-states is not all about making the most gold anymore. Perhaps. Okay, archery, that's cool. It's not about making the most gold, it's basically um, aggressively going after your quests. That's the fastest and best way to um, ally with them. And now that I'm Sweden, I can basically gift them um, great people 
the surplus great people that is. And, and basically, if you play aggressively in Sweden, you get tons of great generals, and then the ones that you don't need, you can you can gift to city states, and it gives you a plus 90 influence boost, which is more than enough usually um, to ally to instantly ally a city state. So it's pretty cool. Okay, so what do I need to do? I've just finished archery. Choose your next technology. Masonry, because I need to. I need. I need masonry so that I can clear this marsh. This marsh, which has sugar on it, and then I can build a plantation on it. So, as you can see, I've, I've basically just been choosing my technologies based on what's around me, what I need to unlock, you know, plantations or or my luxury resources. And on the way, I also chose um, archery so that I can actually start building archers in my uh, capital. So Stockholm has a spearman. I'm going to send the spearman over here to this Katman right here so I can clear it for uh, Katmandu and hopefully ally with him next turn. And this worker right here is um, starting work on this plantation. An unmet player has entered the classical era. An unmet player and Byzantium are now friends. Mm. Theodora making tons of friends. Oh cool, my city state right here. Probably uh, discover it next turn. Stockholm grows. It's gonna be a very rich city because they have we're gonna have um, th three plantations around here. Singapore, damn it. <sighs> mercantile, see, it's it's a mercantile city state. Mercantile city states are cool because they 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 give you one um, exclusive luxury resource. Dyes are not exclusive, but jewelry and porcelain are two exclusive luxury resources that are only found in mercantile um, city-states. I was hoping I'd find um, porcelain because that's what Kathmandu wants and I want to sort of um, gain as much influence with them as possible. But this jewelry is still awesome. Dyes and jewelry is the two things that are um, that are, you know, that are not... actually there's dyes here, so dyes here are not very useful with Singapore. But you know what, if, if I ally Singapore and they give me their dyes, then I can trade away this um, surplus dye if I build a city here fast, which I should, I should beat, um, Ethiopia there, because they tend to not expand too much, they play culturally. You have met Singapore, yes, I know. Perfect, and there's an encampment right here that they want me to clear, so that I should be able to ally Singapore pretty fast. Okay. Ethiopia announces to the world that it's now protecting Singapore, I'm also going to do that, so I can get plus 10 influence early on. And Stockholm has grown. So this is an unimproved tile that I need my worker to build a farm on. Farm here, farm here. I need these three to have farms. That's plus three food that I'm missing out on. Stockholm could be building, could be growing much faster, but hey, do what you can. You have to prioritize, prioritize. So, once I have my archer up, I'm probably going to build another archer until I can have a settler. Just to make sure that I'm safe um, from any attacks. Awesome. So I finished building this plantation, and as you can see, it's given me plus two gold, or plus one gold, and plus one culture. So this um, this is a very um, rich tile right now. My next target is going to be this other tile, so I can get another plus one culture. So now I'm making plus five culture. So next policy is in 12 turns. Exploring the Vatican City. Gems again. Jeez, what's wrong with these guys in gems? Every city state around here has gems. Okay. So the Vatican and Wittenberg. Two city states that I want to ally because they're going to give me some nice um, faith boosts. Not going to be too easy with um, Theodora around because she's definitely going to go after Wittenberg and the Vatican aggressively. She needs to. Um, up and running fast. Okay. China. 你好. 你好. 我是女皇帝武则天. Stockholm demands pearls. Okay. When a, when, you're, when when a city demands a specific luxury resource, they go into what's called um, we love the king day and that gives you like a growth um, bonus for like 30 turns or so. So it's it's it's, an, it's a nice incentive to actually um, go after what they're asking. I don't see any pearls around here. 
this way, it's not going to be too easy. Okay. Oh, damn it. They're... Fuck. China's going to clear this um, encampment and they're going to lose the... Um... Shit, I've done that. And China's probably going to kill this encampment and Singapore's... I'm going to lose my uh, faith. Uh, I'm going to lose my um, bonus with um, Singapore. I wanted to ally them. That's okay. On the bright side, I just killed a brute here, and that gave me a nice um, boost with Kathmandu. Just got 12 influence with him. Definitely going to be allied with him once I once I clear out this encampment. That should be cool. And build a plantation here. China wants an embassy. Why not? 25 gold. So I'm, I'm racking up the gold here. It's, it's nice. Excellent. So they did not clear the encampment. I'm gonna insta heal. Take the encampment. Uh, should I return it? No. It, uh, 45 influence is a lot. That'll make that'll instantly make me friends with them. But I'd rather I'd rather take the unit because I need workers. I'm low on workers. This is a godsend. So I'm gonna send my worker here so he can start working. Quebec City, sugar. I have sugar, damn it. Almost allied with Singapore. 54. I'm six away from being um, their ally. That's okay. I could send them a gift of gold now, but I'll wait. I'm, I'm fine in terms of happiness. Okay. Back Quebec. Yeah, see what it says here. You've successfully destroyed the barbarian camp as requested by Singapore. Your influence over them has increased by 50. Influence over Singapore has increased to the point where you are friends. As a mercantile city-state, their markets offer exotic goods to your people, plus two happiness. They've also given you permission to move units to their territory, so that's cool. Being friends with them is, is nice. An unknown civilization has started worshipping a pantheon of the gods. They have chosen the belief, sacred path, plus one culture from jungle tiles. That's, that's okay. So I'm going to hit this, um, this barbarian camp. As soon as I can take it down, I'll become allies with um, Kathmandu, get their gems and a nice cultural bonus. Let us plant the seeds of friends. Yeah, why not? I'm going to be friends with her because she's friends with everyone else, and that's going to make everyone else like me. When you're mutual friends with um, with AIs, everyone else tends to like you. I wouldn't be surprised if in a few turns, um, Ethiopia approached me and said, Oh, I, I realize that you're friends with... With Theodora, maybe this this is like a you know the sign of a long fruitful relationship that tends to happen. Okay, so my unit is promoted. One thing a lot, I'm sure a lot of people don't know is that once you once your unit is promoted, you can change its name. So I'm going to change it from Spearman to um, Blue Guard. That's nice. So it says the blue. That's nice. That's a nice touch. And it's on this encampment's on flat ground, so I'm gonna go with shock one. That gives that gives you plus 15% combat strength when fighting in open terrain. Major victory. Okay, low on health. I hope another unit doesn't spawn here because it's gonna complicate things. I'm gonna move in my archer just in case it happens. Okay, I'm gonna build another archer. Let's check demographics. I'm sixth in soldiers. Notice the difference between me and first is only 4,000 troops, and that's partly because um, this unit's injured, so that kind of brings down the value. Not doing too bad in terms of um, military. See what this is? What this is what I just said? Ah, I've noticed that you've become friends with Byzantium. Glad to hear of it. I'm already on good terms with them myself. <clears throat> that's cool, but I don't really give a shit about Ethiopia because I do intend to swat them like flies. Not by How happy are those okay, so now I have masonry, and that's going to allow me to um, clear this marsh here and get my um, sugar plantation up. Okay, so I finished my um, spice plantation. I have two spice plantations. That's giving me plus 13 gold in the city. That's, that's pretty awesome. And that's plus one culture here, plus one culture here. And then once I have my sugar here, I'll have another plus one culture. So now I have a surplus in um, spices. So that means I want to trade. So I can sell her, her these spices. Usually, if you're on good terms with a um, an AI, 
they will happily buy a luxury resource from you for 240 gold. That sets the, the cutoff point, or 7 gold per turn. So I'm going to go with 240, and that will do. Perfect. So now I'm 767 gold. I can do a lot of things with my gold now. I can, I can probably buy a settler right off the bat, but I'm only 6 turns away from um, getting a settler. Um, I'd like to save my gold now so I can upgrade my units, my archers, later on. <coughs> An unknown player has, and Ethiopia have made a public declaration of friendship. Ethiopia is friends with everyone now. Let's see. Global politics, uh, just so that, in case you missed that, global politics are very important, um, especially in AI. It lets you it lets you get a you know big picture on what's going on. So you open diplomacy, go to diplomacy overview, and then global politics, and it gives you a breakdown of what everyone else thinks of everyone else. So Theodora is friends with me in Ethiopia. Pretty sure they were friends with someone else, and Ethiopia's friends with Byzantium and someone else that I haven't met yet. Yeah, the reason why I can't see who Theodora is friends with other than me and Ethiopia is because I haven't met that civilization. <coughs> now, the most important thing about this um, this menu is the fact that it lets you see what social policies um, other civilizations have unlocked, and this is something extremely important, not just in single player but mainly in multiplayer because it kind of gives you an idea of what that civilization plans to do or how they intend to play the game. Now, Theodora's gone tradition. That means she's not going to expand too fast. She's going to plan on um, growing her first four cities very, you know, very aggressively. She's going to grow big, but not too expansive. Haley Selassie's gone... <coughs> excuse me. Haley Selassie's gone honor. Now, knowing knowing Ethiopia and how the AI is programmed to play Ethiopia, they don't tend to expand too much, like they, they rarely build over two or three cities because they just go full culture. I guess he's going Honor just to you know, protect himself, because Honor is the, supposedly the warpath um, social policy branch. Who's a chance going Liberty? That means expansion, fast expansion, and so is England. So that's, that's interesting. If I keep my spearman here, he might get in trouble. I'm going to treat him to this um, tile, which is jungles and hills which will give me a nice um, defensive bonus where I can heal up. Move in my archer, finish these guys off. Okay, so finished masonry. What do I want to research next? Animal husbandry is cool, because it's going to unlock um, Raphael's horses. Okay, next turn. Vatican City longs for culture. Right, so here's my chance to shine, hopefully. Thing is, uh, we'll see. Okay, they will reward the player with the largest culture growth. So far, you have the lead with six culture. That's cool. I, I, actually, I have a very good chance of, of finishing this quest because I'm most likely going to ally um, Katmandu. They're going to give me a big culture bonus, and then um, I'll definitely have the most culture out of all the other civilizations. If you can, if you couple that with um, my uh, moral tradition. Okay, so I'm gonna move my um, move my worker to this um, sugar tile so that I can clear the marsh and build um, build a plantation. Okay, the arts are flourishing um, in the Vatican. Yeah, that's basically a quest. Someone just built the mausoleum of Halicarnassus. Okay, I don't know who that is. Some of you might be wondering how I have this. It's basically a DLC that you unlock. It was like two dollars, so it was a bargain. But it's a cool uh, DLC. It gives you a few new wonders and stuff. Okay. If we continue exploring here, let's check on um, Stockholm. Yeah. It's not growing. Not too well, at least. One sees this worker from Singapore. Comes, oh, I have to be careful here. See, you need to be careful about sending. This is something that I, I'd like to stress for new players. Never, ever, ever send out a settler or a worker without an escort. Because barbarians will snatch them in a jiffy, and it, it'll just send you into rage. I, I have to do it. I have to do this here because um, I want to keep exploring. I don't want to sort of um, waste my uh, my scout on sending him back all the way east. To escort my work. I'll just try and be careful. I know there's a barbarian camp in here. There's probably um, marauding um, barbarians just, you know, marching around trying to annoy people. So I'll try to stick, um, I'll try and stay as far away as possible from this barbarian camp and, and sort of um, come to Stockholm. Uh, around the safe route. 
Okay, there's another encampment here. Just keep exploring. Okay, I have to get close here. See, archers do have a range of two, but if I kept my archer in this tile over here, he would not have been able to um, attack this barbarian encampment due to the fact that there are forests, or, or jungles, sorry, in the way. Uh, forests, jungles, hills, basically anything that counts as rough terrain, so basically those three um, types of terrain, um, block off your line of sight for ranged units. So you have to be very, very careful and, you know, sort of choose where you put your, um, your ranged units in combat because it, it makes a difference. It makes all the difference in the world, pretty much. So I had to, I had to move um, my archer from this forest tile to this jungle tile so that I can get range on the um, barbarian cabin. The spearman is um, healing up. Kathmandu is showering this um, barbarian with, um, with ranged attack from their city. Hopefully next turn I'll have enough. Um, it'll have low HP so I can actually go and finish him off. Yeah, I should be able to finish him off now and get an extra boost with Kathmandu. So, if I click on Construct Plantation, it's automatically going to remove the marsh. It doesn't make a difference. So it says 9 turns if I Construct Plantation, 4 turns if I clear the marsh. So now he's clearing the marsh anyway. Okay. Decisive victory. Yes, perfect. So I killed that Barbarian, and that's another plus 12 influence with Kathmandu. This is looking awesome. So I'm only 2 away from being friends with them, and 12 away from being um, their ally. So I'm just going to kill off this Barbarian encampment, and that will make me allies with them, which is going to give me their gems sooner or later, and a huge um, cultural uh, boost. Okay, so that's turn 50. I think I'll just end this, um, this session here. And give me your, give me your feedback. I, I know a lot of you are probably going to be... I'm sorry. I know a lot of you are going to be disappointed with the fact that I'm not putting up a Men of War video or a Napoleon vid. Because that's it's, you know that's, that's what I've become known for, but you know it doesn't hurt to sort of diversify, play different games and stuff. It's it's a very interesting game. For those of you who haven't played this game before, I highly highly recommend this game. Very fun, very deep, um, and I guarantee you hundreds of hours if you actually learn. It, it has a, a very steep learning curve, but once you learn the ropes and you get your head around everything, it's a very interesting game. And if you if you stick and you stick around and watch this LP, I promise to make it very informative and um, interesting. Okay, thank you very much.